Evening everyone, welcome back to my channel, True Crime with Jess Rose. Thank you for joining me. Uh, sorry I didn't put a video up last week um, with the Easter holidays. I hope you all had a lovely Easter too. Um, but tonight I would actually like to look at a different show and it's called Countdown to Murder. And I haven't watched many uh, cases on this particular programme, but this one stood out to me because the girl involved actually used to be on EastEnders um, back in the 90s and the girl's name is Gemma McCluskey and she was born in 1983. She had two older brothers, uh, Tony McClus McCluskey was six years older and then she had Danny McCluskey who was eight years older and she was just, she was like the little princess of the family, she was very outgoing, you know, from a very early age, from who you know she was dancing around and putting on little skits and stuff you know and then when she turned seven she started at drama school and she got a couple of roles in adverts and stuff and you know just a very outgoing member of the family you know her brothers doted on her my parents doted on her you know lovely girl tiny you know very cute little girl so when she was 17 um, she got uh, her big break in EastEnders and she was actually on the show for four years from 1997 to 2001 and it, she, she she wasn't a main character but she was best friends with one of the main characters which was Zoe Slater which was part of the Slater family you know a, a big established family within the show and you know her character in the show was a bit like herself, you know, quite outgoing and feisty and, you know, although in real life she wasn't as promiscuous as her character was or anywhere now, um, she was actually a very caring girl. Um, you know, she appeared, I think she'd done 34 appearances in the show uh, before her character was kind of written out. And after that, her family said she kind of got a bit disheartened with her acting career and stuff and not only that her mom who she was very close to you know look say it was a close family her mom got poorly now in this time um although they, were, they did remain close her parents broke up and uh, her mom um Gemma and Tony uh stayed with the mom and then Danny stayed with the dad and you know Gemma, because her mum got poorly, Gemma took on a very motherly role. Like I said, very caring girl. And, you know, she was 21. She left EastEnders, like I said. Um, you know, and she just went back to normal life. Now, they lived in Shoreditch in London. And she, you know, had two jobs. You know, she very outgoing girl, but just very family orientated. And like I said, her mum was very poorly. So she was looking after her. But also, there was her brother. Now, like I say, Tony McCluskey was six years older than Gemma. And you would imagine he would, you know, look down. Now, Danny, the eldest, who was eight years older than Gemma, he was like Gemma, very caring, very family oriented, you know, looked out for everyone. And whereas Tony, um, you know, they did say as a child was very shy you know he was apparently a lovely boy but he was bullied at school and you know he was very different to his older brother and younger sister and as he got older he um you know he he went off the rails he you know started started smoking they they base a lot uh, on this show um of his addiction to to skunk Basically, he smoked a lot of weight. He smoked a lot of skunk. He, you know, they said he couldn't get up in the morning without having a joint. You know, it was beside his bed. Um, you know, and given the fact that he was quite, he was quite a weak character. Looks like very reserved. And although people said he was a lovely boy, as he was getting older, um, you know. <sighs> that changed and he became quite selfish and you know behind all of this there was a 
a severe resentment to Gemma. Gemma. Now, all the family was so proud of her when, you know, she got into acting and especially landing the role of EastEnders. You know, her dad says on the show, he shouted it from the rooftops, which you would. Could you imagine how proud you'd be? You know, one of the, the top soap shows in, in the UK and your daughter's on it, you know, she's coming into millions, is it, of people's house households every night? Uh, well, three times a week. And... Um, yeah, it's so proud, but, you know, Tony wasn't, he, it, this jealousy started to manifest against Gemma, and although, like I say, you know, EastEnders didn't, it worked out, you know, she, she was on there, but she never actually made it into a main cast member, um, and when she was let go, you know, she decided to just take on a normal life. But he was still very jealous because don't forget, she was still recognised everywhere. You know, she was a very bubbly character. She went on the night, she worked in a nightclub and everyone liked her. She was loved by everyone, her family, her friends. And she had this very caring personality. Like I say, you know, her mum was very poorly, so she was looking after her mum. She was looking after Tony. Now, this lad should have been like the older brother there and supported her and but he wasn't, he was He was a little bit of a, a waster, I suppose. So this jealousy, as the years are going on, you know, it's, it's getting quite bad. And they say that with the skunk smoking and also his, his own personality, he started to develop a psychosis and he had a lot of erratic behaviour happening. Um, so Gemma's mum now goes into hospital and the relationship between Gemma and Tony was was getting really frayed, you know. Um, she just wanted him to pull his weight, and he obviously wasn't doing that. He wasn't helping around the house. He, he was just constantly stoned. That was it. But I think from everyone else's perspective, it was just a brother and sister bickering, you know, clean up his stuff, get his stuff, he's stop nagging, you know, from an outside point of view, it doesn't seem anything out of the ordinary, really. I suppose the fact that he was older and he maybe should have snapped out of that behaviour boy now, but, you know, it wasn't a real concern to anyone. Um, well, in early 2012, um, he was starting to not only be verbally aggressive to Gemma, he was getting physically aggressive to her. And, you know, the dad says she phoned him and she phoned her older brother as well, saying, look, Tony just had a boy at throat on the stairs. Now, like I say, this girl, is, she's tiny, you know, and you see him. And, you know, everyone says she's quite feisty, she could fight her own corner, but you're talking about a little, you know, small, petite little girl against a grown man, obviously older than her. And... Um, you know, she tried to fight a corner, but she, you know, she don't really stand a chance, does she, in those sort of arguments? And so, yeah, it says that by this point now, his personality, he's starting to have trouble distinguishing between fact and fiction, and this jealousy is still manifesting. So, I mean, she's not acting anymore. You know, she's just a normal girl. Okay, she was still recognised and she was very well loved but I think that was just her personality not the fact that you know she'd been famous I, I think that was just who she was so this show kind of down to murder what it does it it it, it gives you a you know a background of the people we're talking about and then it is very interesting this show because it counts down from the day an incident has happened to an hour so you know I do have the times of when you know things went very badly wrong so uh, on 1st of March 2012 uh, Gemma gets up a uh, normal day she's going to see her friend's child at a hospital who's um, I think doing like a, it's a choir uh, singing at a hospital you know she was just a caring person she was going to see her friend's 
child appearing that then she was going to visit another friend then that afternoon she was going to visit her mum in hospital then that evening she was going to work for the night group that was her day set on the 1st of March 2012 you know her, her day was set Tony on the other hand her brother remember he wakes up <coughs> reaches straight for his joint as he does every other morning and he's not feeling that way he's you know, this resentment is, is really building against his sister. So he gets up, runs a bath, but because he's half stoned, goes back to bed and the bath overflows. So she's running around getting ready, sees the bath overflow and goes in, you know, has a massive go at him, as anyone would, anyone would. If that was one of my brothers, you know, I'd be like, what are you playing at? Um, But it was kind of... It was the straw that broke the camel's back for Gemma, and she was like, that's it, you've got to go, you've got to leave, I, you know, I can't cope with it, you've got to leave the house. So, of course, they have this massive break, him insisting he's going nowhere. Um, and she leaves, she leaves and leaves in the automatic, and look, you're out by the time I get home. So she goes to the hospital, and on this show, there's a lot of CCTV footage as well, and there's actually... Uh, photos of her at the hospital, you know, very excited watching her friend's son. You know, the CCTV footage of her driving from the hospital. Um, so at uh, half 12, she goes to her friend's house. And while there, her friend says, you know, there was a phone call from Tony. Didn't sound like a very nice phone call to his sister. Um, Gemma held it together. So, although they knew it wasn't great, you know, she hadn't told her friends that he'd been physical with her. The family know, <coughs> but... She kept things like that to herself. She just seems like a really nice girl. She really does, and oh, she really did. And, you know, they didn't realise the extent of Tony's behaviour towards Gemma. So when she left to go home, you know, no one was concerned. We just thought, oh, she's going home. You know, she was going back to get ready to go and visit her mum in hospital. So the CCTV footage, like I say, of Gemma going home, and this is at one o'clock uh, in the afternoon, and then at half one, it catches her again going into the flat where they live. So that's the last footage of Gemma McCluskey alive. That that was it. That was it. Because when she gets into the flat, of course, Tony's still there because he's refused to go. And a row starts again. And she's like, you know, you've, you've, you've got to go, that's enough. And a neighbour, after the fact, actually says they heard arguing. Um, at one point thought, you know, do I knock on? You know, because you hear it escalating. Um, and the neighbour could actually hear Gemma crying, could actually hear her crying, but then it went quiet. And they didn't hear any more, and they carried on about their day. And basically, when they'd had this argument um, at some point in the flat, in so, at some point when it had got physical, Tony had hit Gemma over the head. It said two to three times she had um, two to three skull fractures on her head uh, from a blunt object. Don't know what it was, but um, it killed her. It killed her. You know, he lost his temper and that was it. He killed his sister. So that's devastating. That's that's devastating. That's awful. And, you know, that'd be bad enough if that's all I was telling you. But no. Um, he doesn't exactly know what to do. No, with Gemma. You know, he's, he's got his sister there. What does he do? So rather than doing the right thing and find the ambulance, uh, you know, saying, look, this went badly wrong. No, 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 no. He doesn't do that. He carries Gemma up to the bathroom, uh, gets an off from the kitchen, and tries to dismember her, his sister, his little sister. She was 29 years old. Um, and when that doesn't work, he's seen... that Now, Tony can't draw it. So he's seen walking to a shop where he picks up a meat cleaver, bin bags, cleaning materials, <laughs> all this is, is spotted on CCTV. You know, 
they never clock these cameras that are around everywhere. You know, all of these stories I do, they never seem to realise they're always being watched. So he brings them back <clears throat> and proceeds to cut his little sister up into manageable pieces, apparently. Um, well, Gemma had a um, little tattoo in the small of her back um, that, that became a factor. Um, and so basically, he chops her up. This is on the 1st. On the 2nd of March, no, Gemma's still there. Gemma's there now. So Gemma's dead. She was dead in the afternoon, so we know. He's done what he's done. So now he starts sending text messages to his ex-girlfriend saying, you know, I'm sorry, I've been funny with you. Then he sends a text message to Gemma saying, you know, um, I've been to visit mom in hospital, something that he, he didn't really do. Um, you know, she's, you know, she's okay. Love you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. That's what he wrote to her. Um, and it was said that when they checked previous text messages, he never, ever entered a text message saying he looked at us all, never any kisses. You know, he dropped himself in there and then trying to cover his own back. Um, so, on, look, say, on the 2nd of March 2012, again, CCTV, at 10.49, there's footage of him carrying a suitcase out of the flats to a taxi that's waiting and he gets the taxi to drop him to the canal the nearby canal and he gets out and from there he drops his suitcase obviously the taxi driver leaves and he drops his suitcase into the into the canal so apparently then he goes back he doesn't need a suitcase for the rest he walks the rest of Gemma back to the canal and throws the rest of her dismembered body into the canal. So then he tries to really cover his back now. So it's the 3rd of March. He starts telling people, look, I haven't seen Gemma. She's been missing for two nights. He goes to his dad. He goes to the older brother, Danny. You know, there's something going on. He starts phoning all her friends, you know, acting the real concerned older brother. Where's my sister? So they all go to the police station again. There's footage of the three. There's three of them. There's one of Gemma's friends, Danny McCluskey, obviously the oldest brother, Antonio, in the police station. But when asked, you know, when was the last time he seen her? What was the last? What was the circumstance of the last time he seen her? He gave three different answers. Even while his brother and Gemma's friend was there, so his brother did say on the show he got really annoyed. But his brother just thought. Again, he was stoned, you know, and he was like, come on, you know, they need you. You know, when did you last see her? You know, he loses his temper for that, not knowing anything else. He just thinks, come on, bro, you know. Um, later on that day, uh, like I say, there's a canal. There was a canal boat going along and it hit the suitcase and it hanged open. And her torso was in the suitcase, obviously discovered in the suitcase, and how they knew was the tattoo I was telling you about that she had in the bottom of her back. Um, obviously, with Gemma being reported missing and then this body. You know, they didn't, they couldn't confirm it until they did the DNA checks, but they said to the family, look, we, you know, we think it's her, and later on in the day, they find other body parts. The one part of her that they didn't find was her head. They didn't find her head at that point. Um, now, because Tony was the last to say her, and he's openly said he was the last to say her, they bring him back in for questioning. And he, oh, he was just really, you know, a, not a very good, credible witness at all, as you'd imagine. Um, you know, they weren't looking elsewhere, put it that way. They'd started to look at footage. You know, seen her go into the flat on the, on the first, never seen her come back out. Um, you know, and they arrest him. They arrest him. They, you know, they're not looking at anything, anyone else. So from the minute he's actually arrested and, and under caution, he gives a no comment interview then. No comment, okay. That's your sister 
who you know now has just been murdered, you know, your little sister, the last thing you do is give a no comment interview, you know, and that's what he did. So, you know, they know, they know. So 10 days later, 35-year-old Tony McGluskey was charged with his sister's murder. Um, you know, and when this became public knowledge, the, the taxi driver came forward, you know, they'd found the CCTV, came forward, they checked, you know, they checked the boot of the car where the suitcase had been in the phone, Gemma's blood in there. You know, um, obviously they found, oh, oh, they found blood on the knife in the flat, even though he tried to clean up, he'd, you know, he, he hadn't cleaned up very good, put it that way. But he was still denying it to the family. Can't blame him, really. My oh, God, you know. But, so, Danny, the older brother and the dad, um, now, don't forget, I said the mum's very, very poorly. Now, the mum's in the hospital. And someone had to break this news to her. Um, and the last thing they wanted to do was say, tell her that, and also tell her that the person who did it is her son. So, <clears throat> the dad and Danny go to the place and they're like, look, you know, you've got him locked up. You know, are you 100%? Have you got evidence for this? Because you're ripping this family apart. And they show them the CCTV footage of Tony dragging the suitcase. The suitcase that was found in the canal. They show him. The dad and Danny, all, you know, recognise him straight away. And, <clears throat> you know, they knew it was him then. And you just can't imagine. You can't imagine how them parents feel. You know... Oh, you know, you've lost your daughter in such horrific, horrific, <coughs> sorry, um, horrific circumstances. And it was your son. It was your son that did it. Um, so, yeah, can't even imagine it. And to add insult to injury, they can't bury her because they haven't found her head. And it actually took six months six months before her head was found and they could finally, finally bury her. Now, her mum, <coughs> no, her mum was that poor she couldn't even go to the funeral. I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine what this family was going through. You know, the dad and brother were so strong to appear on this show, so strong and, you know, they're very manly men and, you know, you've seen that it was breaking them even to talk about it now, you know, it, oh, it's just terrible. So, on the 13th of January, 2013, the trial of Tony McCluskey starts. And he actually tried to blame her a little bit. He tried to say she provoked him and the nagging and he couldn't take it anymore. And, you know, he flipped. And, you know, that was just shot out, you know, out of the court. It was like, <coughs> <coughs> no one believed it at all. You know, this girl was tiny. What damage was she going to do to him, really? You know, and when they did do mental, uh, you know, checks on him and stuff and, you know, analysed him, it, it, they did put it down to the skunk he was smoking, um, that he, he was psychotic. And one of the professionals on the show actually put it down to an age-old thing of just jealousy. Jealousy of his little sister. That's what <coughs> triggered this. I'm ever so sorry. Can you sorry? I'm sorry. I had a bit of a cold, but I weren't expecting this, so I'm ever so sorry. Um but yeah, just jealousy of his own little sister rather than being proud like the rest of the family was. And it just that that jealousy just built into a, such a resentment. But it was something as simple as a, her telling him off for overflowing the bath that, you know, it's just terrible. So on the 30th of January 2013, the jury came back with <coughs> a guilty verdict. Um, he was given life with a minimum sentence of 20 years. He dismembered his sister. Her head wasn't fine for six months. 20 years? Really? He'll be out at 55? If not beforehand, you know, you know how it works. 
But that's what he that's that's what he got. And the dad admits he got he went to visit him. Don't forget, it's still his son. He wants he just wants to know Roy, you know. And he he said he couldn't care less. There was no remorse. He showed no remorse whatsoever. And obviously the dad that was the one only time he went to visit him. You know, he just he meets on the show, he lost two children that day. You know, two kids. He's he's got one left. You know, one in the most horrific circumstances and the other one who did he. Um, you know, her mum died a year out later after the trial. Um, you know, just the family just completely broken. Absolutely broken. And to this day, he's shown no remorse for what he did. Thinks he was, I don't know if he thinks he was, you know, <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, you know, if he was, if, you know, people were okay, not okay with him doing it, but justified, justified him what he did because she was like, I don't know. I, I, this one was just, it was so shocking because I remember her in EastEnders. She was a cheeky little character in it. And, you know, to hear that after that, you know, she went back to a normal life, which must have been very hard. You know, you've got all this fame thrown at you at such a young age. And then to go back to normal, everyday life and be so caring and to try and look out for all your family. And that's all she did. That's all the girl was doing. And she had this brother who just had no part in trying to look out for anybody and because she put her foot down and says actually no no you can leave you're not helping you can leave which I think any of us would do you know she didn't make it out of that flat alone it's just oh it's just so sad <coughs> it really is so so sad um so yeah I just I did want to discuss that one because and, you know, maybe some of you do remember her character, but I will put a link in the bottom and you can, you know, have a look. And yeah, just a really, really sad story. I'm sorry about the coffee in through the video. I am really sorry. You know, these are unedited videos and I hope I haven't disrupted it too much. But thank you for joining me. Um, if you've got any comments, if there's anything you'd like me to look at, if there's any shows you'd like me to have a look at, um, you know, pop it in the box or you'd like to subscribe maybe I'd really appreciate it but thank you again for joining me this evening um I'll be back again my next one will be um it was actually a, a, a crime that happened in America um and it was a young girl called Shanda Shera I think I'm pronouncing that right Ooh, horrific case that I feel like we, we need to discuss this one but we'll talk about that on, on my next video and just thank you again for joining me i really appreciate it thank you